uh, roundup news about Mass Effect and the uh, the apparent truth of what's going on in EA for real. And by the way, thanks again, guys, for uh, supporting the channel and everything that it's doing right now. I really appreciate it big time. Uh, yeah, we are going to get even further into the deep pit, pit of all the dead franchises and everything that EA is doing that is really, really, really going balls to the wall on their uh, true motives. All it takes is one voice, doesn't it? One guy to say this thing that thing being interviewed giving his true insight and this is by the way another voice of a person that used to be that used to work for bioware not anymore for seven years manveer air has worked on wolfenstein singularity mass effect 3 mass effect andromeda and why is he important because he explains what EA's actual motives are completely. And we all knew that. We all know what their true motives are. We, we know that it's just all about the money right now. Just trying to get that cog turning back and forth, back and forth, all the way around. Until eventually it's just going to spin out of control. And then who's going to catch the cog when it falls out? Who's going to fix it? Uh, players aren't. That's for damn sure. But let me get into more specifics here. So, Manveer Air, Air, sorry, just recently had a podcast or an episode on Vice's Waypoint Radio. I'll put a link in the description below for you guys to listen to the full interview of him. Uh, this guy is an ex Bioware developer, and he kind of gives. Not kind of. He gives his his look on how it all went down with the company throughout his seven year uh, seven year career at Bioware, and like I said, he worked on Mass Effect Three and Andromeda. So um, it's it's another guy, another big supporter of the company that loved doing what he loved. You know, I mean, he loves doing the most. So now he's gone. Everything's just going to shit. So he definitely, uh, he gives his take on it, and we'll start with this. This is definitely a thing inside of EA. They are generally pushing for more open world games, and the reason is you can monetize them better. The words EA use are, have them come back again and again. Why do you care about that, EA? The reason you care about it is that because of microtransactions, people buying card packs for the Mass Effect games and multiplayer, etc. That's the same reason why we added multiplayer to Mass Effect 3, right? To get people to keep coming back to a thing to just play for 60 to 100 hours. The problem is, is that we've scaled up our budgets to 100 million plus dollars, and we actually haven't made a space for linear single player games that are under that. But why can't we have both? Why does it have to be one or the other? It's simple. Monetization, folks. Money. Money! Get the people to pay for so much for just to play in a game that is even that great. It's just semi okay. Just semi. I mean, why not do it? Oh, man. It's like, oh, I can make money from this. We're actually making money from people who love our franchise so much. We're taking advantage of the passion they have and the, the, the competitive player base of games nowadays because apparently single player games are a thing in the past it's all about this competitive shooter this competitive market about shooters and mlg and battlegrounds it's all about making money but wait players unknown battlegrounds hmm a simple game a simple battle royale game and yet the player count is number one out of all the games in the world playing you know out of, I think out of shooters or just you know just player count in general with uh, like competitive gaming how do they do that do they charge you 60 plus dollars do they rob you of your money of microtransactions do they all of the above no they just do a simple concept of something that people would like and then look how it turned out you pay once and that's it you get everything you need I know it's just one game mode and there's really nothing else to do besides survive for your life, but it's working, isn't it? Without microtransactions. Oh, jeez. And uh, 
Hmm. Didn't EA try doing that with Andromeda? And, uh, you know, it. look where the game ended up now. Or look where it's ended up. It worked for Mass Effect 3. Because 3 actually had a great story. But, but, but. The ending is because of the online portion. And because of EA wanting to make money. Because guess what? You can't get the whatever Mass Effect 3 ending you want without playing multiplayer. Now how fucked up is that? Pretty fucked up, huh? So it just continues with these sales and everything. Throughout the years, we see that games are starting to do this, like Destiny is a huge example of microtransactions. Battlefront 2 from EA is doing microtransactions as well. They don't care. Because they hear all these things that that fans had a complaint complaints about in the uh, in their first installments of those games, like Battle Battlefront One, uh, Des not Destiny, but you know, uh, was it Titanfall One, you know, Battlefield One. They all have microtransactions in them. I don't know about Titanfall Two, but I know Battlefield One and uh, Battlefront Two have microtransactions, and people were in a rage about it. A beta. You're going to charge people on a beta, a fucking beta, for a game that everybody is supposed to love and it's suppo you're supposed to just go in with no strings attached. Now, you're going to have to pay your way. You're going to have to pay to play. What about the Old Republic? What's EA doing with the Old Republic? They're, they're making millions of dollars from that game every day. There's people buying shit all the time in the cartel marketplace. The type of thing they called it, the hut cartel in Star Wars. I, I love the Old Republic, but I don't, I don't really, I've never really spent uh, real money in that game at all. Because, you know, the game itself is pretty good. Just listen to this. Just listen to this. The reason is that EA and those big publishers in general only care about the highest return on investment. They don't actually care about what the players want. They care about what the players will pay for. Those are subtly different things. And thus, the creation of Anthem was born. Anthem is a pure example of EA just wanting microtransactions in an only online type of scenario. Just like Destiny. Just like Activision. Activision's like, yeah, well, we're the first motherfucking assholes to do this and give you, guess what? They pulled the Mass Effect Andromeda. Or Andromeda pulled the Destiny 1. Shit story. Oh, gameplay is okay, but shit content. And just things that just, ugh, all this microtransaction stuff. It just, ugh, it was just so bad. But people still played it, people still paid for it. Such as I, I played the game for a while when it first came out, and I was just so appalled by what Activision has done to the game. I mean, Marty O'Donnell was fired. Motherfucking Marty O'Donnell. If you guys don't know who Marty O'Donnell is, he's the, the OG composer for Halo franchise, Halo 1 through 3 and Halo Reach and ODST, and he did Destiny 1 as well. And they fired him. And this is what... These are the type of decisions that these people make. Uh, when it comes to these money-grubbing uh, companies. Money-grabbing. EA is no different. You saw it with Mike Laidlaw. Uh, Casey Hudson coming back to Anthem. Not working on Mass Effect. You saw Visceral Studios get shut down. You see uh, Bioware Montreal get shut down. You saw... Uh, Aaron Flynn. Aaron Flynn is gone. Mike Laidlaw. And then this. And then Manfear Air gone. There's just. Just so many things are dying out. And just all all it is is just, I just see that their voices aren't going to be heard well enough because it's just. EA is just going to stuff money in our mouths, right? And they're just going to have us spit it right back at them. You know? I actually want to spend my hard earned money. On something that's not gonna fucking try to steal from me. But this is what it takes nowadays. These games are over a hundred million dollars. They're they're over well, I think Mass Effect and Drama is forty million. But the thing is, EA wants to make that money back. And then some. That's why Andromeda has died completely. And that's why it's free on Xbox One right now. 
because it didn't make back the sales or the the money they were supposed to. Besides, oh, this guy who spent fifteen thousand dollars on Mass Effect Andromeda cards or something like that, just packs. Oh God. Oh Lord. You guys need to understand. This is what they want you to do. Spend your money on things that are gonna make you happy in real life, not in a video game. Write a damn book. I'm writing a damn book. <laughs> Writing a book will make you happy. So the article goes on talking about the uh, the talking about the original Battlefront remake was heavily criticized for its lack of content and season passes. And then EA is like, "All right, we'll promise you this. We'll give you that. These are things that we want. I'm a AAA publisher." And then guess what? The microtransactions come in. Oh, but but wait, you got single player. That's what you wanted, right? Oh, you wanted more levels? You wanted more this? Oh, that's fine. Ooh, what's this? Loot crates. You wanted this Twinkie you are paid $30,000 for? Exaggeration uh, times a million. Overwatch does it. Destiny does it. Anthem's going to do it. Battlefront 2's going to do it. Battle Battlefield 1, Battlefront 2. I don't know. I know I said that already. <laughs> so, to further highlight the situation, we'll go on with more quotes. So what's really happening here with Visceral Shutdown is you're seeing a very cynical view. I would say by EA, and you're going to see this from other publishers as well, I'm saying this stuff is dead. We need more Battlegrounds and more Rust and Bioware's new game, Anthem? Anthem isn't a traditional looking Bioware game. Austin talks about how Anthem is very similar to Destiny with online elements and possible item monetization. And Manvir says, I'm not saying you're wrong. So that is what you're seeing from a place like Bioware owned by EA, a place where I worked for seven years, if that's what you're seeing from Visceral now closing and going to this other Vancouver studio. Yes, and it's, you know, it's not hard to predict what a company is really trying to do, what they're really trying to sell. Because Bioware wouldn't make a game like this. They really wouldn't. They wouldn't make an open world game. Or, you know what I'm talking about, like something related to Destiny. They wouldn't do that. They love linear experiences. They love linear stories. They love books that can be told to you in a video game setting. That's what makes games great and worth every fucking penny. But no, instead, if you, instead, you just get all these fucking problems with that, with Mass Effect or with the game itself, and all they have that's saving is just microtransactions. Taking a soul out of a game and then putting it on a treadmill for this microtransaction bullshit is really fucked up. Really fucked up. But you guys already knew that. And, you know, the franchise isn't dead. We know that. They're just... Sleeping in cryo freeze. We know that. But who knows? Who knows when it'll come back? Maybe when EA finally fucking learns their lesson that, geez, you know, we have so many licensed games that are making us a gazillion, bazillion dollars. And this is what we're doing to our fans. We're alienating them. We're preying on these poor individuals, poor as in like these sad desperate people for a game and there are some people that are going to defend these fuckers defend ea and say they make the best games that that this is good this is how you get your 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 people into your uh, economy and a part of something you know you're digging in you're really getting what it's meant to really be about there are people that don't even fucking give a shit about that and those people that don't show that show inaction are the weakest of them all and if that's you i'm sorry you can get mad all all you want. You're playing a game that is just feeding on your desperation on something that's dead. You're beating a dead horse. Stop it. Go play something else. So, further quotes go on is, I think what it means is that the linear single-player AAA game at EA is dead for the time being. But this, Eric goes on to recount how history repeats itself in the games industry and how I'd say linear FPS games are dead when he was making other older Wolfenstein games. When Call of Duty 4 came out, it reminded everyone that FPS games weren't dead. 
and we were able to add more linear stuff to Wolfenstein to get it done. So every now and again, there are games that come out to remind everyone that no, they are not dead. Elix, Battle Chasers. If you do everything really well and nail it, you're going to crush it and you'll find an audience. If you look at the games that are being leaders, they don't really follow the trends. We have to be able to look at that way and remind ourselves as an industry that we're not just about one type of game and that we can support multiple types of games. If EA is not going to do it, then other people are willing to fill in those gaps and make a bunch of money. Yeah. Those those old school uh, developers that just, that just know how to make a single player game good without adding multiplayer. I mean, they can even add multiplayer to it and still make it amazing. You know what company that still knows how to make really great exclusives is Nintendo. Nintendo, yes, some of you may be cringing because it's like, oh, the Switch is really garbage or whatever. You know, it doesn't look like a PC graphical type thing. But the Switch is doing really well because they're actually doing it right for the most part. Now, I understand that the Switch may seem a little overpriced and then some of the attachments for it are really expensive. Like a Pro Controller is like $70. That's ridiculous. But the games themselves are really, really great games that are exclusive Nintendo games. Breath of the Wild is one of the best games I've ever played. And then it's a single player open world game that knew what the fuck they were doing. It was worth every delay. Everything was perfect about that game. Eh, I know you could say it had the weakest story in Zelda games, but that, that's the price we can get with open world games where they're not so linear. But that game did so many things to make it feel like a linear experience and at the same time open world. You can just, after you get past the beginning area, I'm like wearing a t-shirt. I'm not sponsored by them. You can just go and beat the game right away. You want to go beat it? You can go ahead and beat it. They even said it themselves. You want to go get the Master Sword? Fine, go go try to do it. You don't have to get it. You want to go help out these four guardians at these temples? Okay, you can do that if you want. That's amazing. And there's just so many things in between. There's so much depth. And then you got Mario Odyssey coming out. You got Fire Emblem Warriors. You got uh, Shin, Shin Megami Tensei 5 coming out for Nintendo, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Um, eventually, there's going to be a Pokemon game for the Switch. All these, uh, you know, Pokemon fighting game that's out right now, DX, but there's another Pokemon game coming. Nintendo still knows how to keep its keep its exclusivity, but that's that, that was its main downfall. I understand that. They had a lack of third party. That's why the Wii U failed so hard. But now they're learning their lesson. They're learning their lesson. It took, what, one generation of this? to do it of, of their console because the Wii the Wii had all these third party developers but the, the Wii U didn't really have that much but now they're getting it Bethesda loves the Switch you got Doom Wolfenstein 2 and you got Skyrim coming so mm, Nintendo knows what it's doing but guys just just realize that EA is being really really evil right now and with its fans Sadly, the only thing that's having me buy Battlefront 2 is the amount of content it does have and it's Star Wars and I am wanting to play the single player game. Now you don't want to hear what I think about Star Wars as a whole right now being owned by Disney. Oh no, no, you don't want to get me into that. That's, oh, that's another topic. Oof. But thanks again guys. If I miss anything, I do apologize. Uh, you can read the article. I'm going to post a link to the article. And then to the, uh, what was it, the the discussion that they had, the interview with Air, uh, Manveer Air, on the uh, Vice's Waypoint Radio. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Hope you guys understand the frustration that I'm going through right now. And uh, it's sad to see another person feel like this about a company. It really is. And we thought Casey Hudson was going to save the day. Not now, maybe one day, once he breaks free of the shackles, he was chained up again. Don't let EA chain you up.